six block perimeter setup. We're all locked down here. I started to think almost immediately that it was most likely terrorism. Ed Davis called me very shortly after I learned about the bombings and said, Rick, we've had two terrible explosions. Send your bomb techs and send your SWAT team. So what do you need? Command center. Really big one. The Black Falcon, uh, the FBI wanted a giant warehouse where they could literally recreate Boylston Street, which they did. And they figured out where all the video cameras would have been positioned. And then they had hundreds of agents pouring over these video footage and studying the site. They got so much footage from the cameras on the street and from people filming the marathon that it actually crashed the government servers. FBI servers just got 12,000 emails in under a minute. Holy Christ. And we're crashed. This one agent was able to identify one individual who appeared to be looking away when everybody else was looking towards the bomb. And that's what started it all. Boss! Later that afternoon, we obtained additional film footage of Jokar walking with Tamerlan down Boylston Street, both carrying backpacks. Two bombers. And we need to share this visual evidence with the American public and enlist the American public's help in identifying these two individuals. These two guys saw their pictures, realized that it would only be a matter of time before we arrested them. And they went out and tragically assassinated Sean Collier to try to get another gun. They soon realized they needed a better car, so they hijacked the car. Danny Meng, who was a young uh, Chinese immigrant who was carjacked by the brothers, planned and executed a stunning escape. He was able to tell the police where they were, and probably more than anyone else can be given credit for stopping these guys. Very quickly, we identified the car moving around in Watertown. And the Watertown police, all of a sudden, they're in a shootout for their lives. <laughs> After the shootout in Watertown, Joe Carr, the younger brother, escaped, and they lost They couldn't find him. They found the car was abandoned. They couldn't find him. And with Governor Patrick, a group of uh, these men made an unprecedented decision to literally shut the city down. All civilians are asked to please shelter in place. Every inch of this city is getting searched. I often get asked about the so-called lockdown. We ask people to shelter in place just to give us the room to do whatever needed to be done for however large an operation this might have been. In fact, I also had the, the train to New York stopped. One of the decisions they made that is so remarkable is the instinct to include the people of Boston as part of the defense of Boston. And that's the reason they were caught. And it was a tip from a brave and concerned citizen of Watertown, Massachusetts named David Hennenberry who investigated a strange activity inside his boat and immediately contacted the law enforcement authorities and reported that. The hostage rescue team came in, brought in negotiators, tried to talk to them, put snipers in position so that they could cover and make safe the environment and give law enforcement the best possible chance to get this guy out of the boat and to prosecute him. That task force came together at all levels to work cohesively as a team and as a result of that, we were able to apprehend both subjects within about 102 hours in the bombings.